and welcome to the biological life sciences channel today in this video we are going to see about the introduction to bioinformatics what is bioinformatics what is its importance and how it is a useful field in biotechnology today so let's begin so let's see first of all what is bioinformatics it's a sub discipline sub discipline of biology and computer sciences it is concerned with acquisition of storage analysis and dissemination of biological data most often dna and amino acid sequences so we know that the biological data is in uh, generally sequences form so how to analyze this biological data how this bio uh, biological data is useful and what are the importance of biological data that can be reduced by using bioinformatics it uses computer program for a variety of application including determination of gene and protein function establishing evolutionary relationship predicting three dimensional shapes of protein etc there are lots of other applications of bioinformatics that we are going to discuss in this video uh, first time pauline hodgewedge and ben hesper coined the term in 1970 to refer the study of information processing processes in biotic system so these two scientists were studying the biotic systems and whatever the da data that was generated uh, that they used and stored using computers so they called it as bioinformatics so from there the term bioinformatics began let's see the insight of bioinformatics here you can see it is help uh, helps us to uh, solve the complex biological problems so there is a relation between four different disciplines that is biology computer science chemistry and statistics all this together being brings the bioinformatics at the center here algorithms techniques of computer sciences being used to solve the problems that are faced by molecular biologists and the information technology is applied to the management and analysis of the huge biological data and its storage the importance uh, of these uh, two functions are bioinformatician builds tool for each uh, bio it market has observed a significant growth in genomic era this bioinformatics helps on uh, helps in uh, determining the importance of biological sequences and its uses into the biology and molecular biotechnology uh, let's see the key areas in bioinformatics uh, first of all there is a sequential analysis that is very important here there are different sequences present in uh, dna as well as uh, amino acids or proteins so these sequences are very important for different functions of gene so whatever the sequence is that is helpful in uh, doing homology searches and determining the relation between different families uh, by creating the databases of these sequences online it can be accessible to anyone anywhere in the world and thereby helping in researchers to up to, uh, to update their researches about the particular topic it also helps in structural bioinformatics where different functions of genes are predicted and uh, the structure of 3d structure of a protein is determined which will help in its research in further areas there is a, let's see what are the different biological data bank and databases that are available uh, the very fast growth of biological database takes place through uh, data banks uh, because the, the biological data is highly diverse you can see the biological data can be in primary sequences its 3d structure functional data data entry usually requires for publication sequences and structures so different databases are available where the uh, different kinds of sequences based on different uh, functions different uh, uh, character are placed into the different databases uh, let's take some example for nucleic acid it's embl gene bank and ddbj these are the three primary sequence databases of nucleic acid whereas for protein it's protein information repo, uh, resource then mips then swiss prot then trumbull and nrld 3d these are the few examples here uh for the, uh, for a particular an alignment or for a particular sequences that has been stored in a database uh, we can do the uh, alignment searches or sequence searches uh, the program used here is called blast so uh, there are different uh, programs uh, that functions for aligning the sequences the first function of this is aligning the sequences that is uh, if a sequence is, is already stored in a database and you have isolated a sequence then you want to check whether this uh, how many sequences in the whole world till now are aligning with your sequences or related to your sequences so that you may get a insight that what is the function of the sequence that you are doing or whatever the research you are doing on a particular organism can be uh, seen uh, or how the organism is related uh, to the worldwide species of organisms so it helps in finding the relatedness of the protein or gene uh, if they have a common ancestor or not 
mutation in the sequences brings the changes or divergence in the sequence uh, it can also reveal the part of the sequence which is which is crucial for the function of gene or a protein its similarity indicates conserved function means a, a, a particular species is having a particular gene which is th uh, same throughout the whole species through its evolutionary history then such kind of gene can be used as a barcode for that species so therefore uh, sequence alignment helps in finding such kind of conserved sequences then human and mouse genes are more than 80 percent similar so you can do uh, different types of testing and all on mice because uh, it has a uh, large genome similarity then you can go for comparison of sequences and, and it helps us in understanding the different function of the sequences so therefore the sequence alignment is very important here so after ob obtaining the nucleic acid or uh, amino acid sequence the first thing is to compare with the known sequences that are already stored in the databases in bioinformatics so comparison is done at the level of constituents uh, then the finding of conserved residues to predict the nature of the nature and function of the protein is done this process is called mapping the sequence alignment can be done in two ways either it's pairwise means one to one sequencing or it is multiple means a single sequence is uh, aligned with different sequences available online uh, there is another two types based on the scale on which you are aligning first is local alignment that is uh, done through smith and Water uh, waterman's algorithm and then global alignment it's needleman's and wung's al algorithm uh, these algorithms are present online uh, using different uh, search tools uh, you can do the alignment such as blast uh, then gaps alignment ungapped alignments are there depending on the type of alignment you are doing so there are different terms that uh, here is required that is homology orthology paralogy xenology similarity identity it depends on different kinds of uh, you know alignment that are mean being done in the sequences so alignment is scored using different kinds of matrix uh, it can be a dot plots, dynamic programming algorithm, heuristic methods, then blast and faster results. There are different matrices that are used here such as PAM matrix, blossom matrix that helps in alignment that we are going to see in further videos uh, in details. First of all, let's see one uh, as an example one program that is blast that helps in alignment here. The blast stands for basic local alignment search tool. This is the URL for blast. Uh, it's multi-step approach to find high scoring local alignment between the two sequences so you have to paste the sequences in question here and uh, the, uh, it searches uh, through all the databases that are available to find the fix uh, or find the aligned sequences that is present in the databases online so the list of words of fixed lengths that is amino acids nucleotide expected to give a larger score are seen here for every word searched database an extended ungapped alignment in both directions is done and whatever the gap or whatever the uh, alignment that is uh, find, uh, found is shown to you there are different types of blast here first of all it's blast n if you are if you are aligning the different nucleotide sequences it's called blast n blast p for protein sequences if it's t blast n then the query sequence is in the form of amino acids and it is translated in the databases form that is in nucleotide form uh, blast x if the inquiry or the query sequence you are using is in nucleotide form means the nucleotide sequence is there you sh uh, and you want the result in protein uh, amino acid sequences then it will be like that and then t blast x it's nucleotide query then it will be translated database uh, in the form of new uh, proteins uh, let's see now the faster uh, faster format or faster alignment it's more sensitive than blast uh, it helps in uh, it, it is able to locate all the identically matching words of the length that is scalable between the two sequences so here blast is hit extensive step whereas fasta is exact word match so as the higher value of scalable increases the search becomes slow because whatever the alignment will be there that will be more fasta also uses e values and bit scores the fasta output provides one or more statistical parameters uh, that is example z score and if the z score ranges from 5 to 15 the sequence pair can be described as highly portable homology and if it's less than 5 the relationship is described as less certain means it shows the uh, simply it blasts and faster these two programs shows the amount of alignment between the sequences uh, of your query sequence as well as the sequence in question to the uh, sequences present in database let's see the different databases in bioinformatics Let's first introduce the database. 
uh, as we have seen why the sequences uh, are stored in database because uh, it is uh, uh, present all over the world it can be assessed all over the world and help uh, in determining uh, the type of research that we are doing so let's see the introduction why the databases are important because uh, there is a fast increase in biological information as the, as in when the research is going on lots of biological data is generated uh, namely in case of uh, dna sequences and the protein sequences so that data has to be stored in a proper online manner so the database does the same work so biological science have now turned in the data rates uh, sciences where different uh, you know gene sequences amino acid sequences are present so it has lots of you know uh, blocks uh, then motifs domains in proteins in nucleotides then structural data such as x-ray uh, diffraction method then nmr method uh, there are lots of things then metabolic pathways protein protein interaction gene expression of data analysis the, all these kinds of sequences are there uh, you uh, the most important two methods that till now is used to determine the structure is xre that is x-ray diffraction study and nmr so uh, till now these two uh, these two methods were uh, the major methods used to determine the 3d structure of proteins or nucleotides but nowadays bioinformatical methods are very helpful uh, in the way of homology modeling and other sequences where you can determine the 3d structure of protein using just computers so therefore it's a very important tool so let's see the history of uh, databases here so in 1956 the first sequence database uh, was created when insulin was sequenced so it had a 51 amino acid uh, sequence uh, first of all at last uh, a protein database sequence was structured in 1965 by margaret day of et al and was a printed book so margaret day of first time did this thing so therefore she is regarded as the father of bioinformatics also uh, it became the base for the pir that is protein information resource that is one of the important database today the first nucleotide sequence that was being stored in the databases was East tRNA sequence. It is having around 77 bases. During this time, 3D structure of protein was being studied and a re-owned PDB was made. What a, what a database feature should be having or what features a database should be having that we are going to see here. The first is uh, data heterogeneity means that the, the data should have lots of uh, different data and it, can, it has to be uh, spread it equally all over the whole world or there should be a homogeneity among the data uh, between the same databases. So it should be able to store high volume of data properly. Uh, there, should, there should be no uncertainty here, data curation should be popular, there should be large scale data integration, then data sharing should be allowed and dynamics and subject to change because the different kinds of sequences should uh, get updated or therefore it should be uh, dynamic in manner. So let's see the classification scheme for da biological databases. So first of all, uh, it depends on the data type, what type of data it is, either it's a nucleic acid sequence or a protein sequence, how it is maintained in a particular data, how the database are accessed what are the data sources means uh, is it a direct author submission or through genome sequencing project you are submitting the sequences or through uh, an another kind of uh, you know papers or journals then database design what kind of sequences and how you are going to store in the database and the sources of organism that are being used so this, these are the different things that has to be kept in mind while storing the data so let's see uh, what are the uh, data types of, uh, or databases types based on the data it's genome databases, then sequence databases, then structure databases there, microarray database, chemical databases, then pathway database, enzyme database, disease database and literature database where all kinds of journals are present. So based on data access, what are the different uh, properties? It's publicly available, such as gene bank, you know, it's publicly available throughout the whole world. Uh, it's available with copyrights also because certain uh, you know sequences and uh, gene sequence are copyrighted also so it, it is available with that also then uh, it helps in browsing only accessible but not downloadable academic but not freely available it is academic it is available for different academic institutions but it's, it is not freely available also because uh, there are certain restrictions to certain sequences that are being patented or copyrighted then proprietary commercial commercial it's a commercial database but still uh, everybody can uh, access that and it's uh, sometimes restricted also depending on the data present 
there are based on the types it's of two types primary or secondary database primary database it contains the original data from the researcher first thing then second it's publicly available or open access mostly uh, the examples are ncbi uh, database that is gene bank uh, then EMBL, uh, European Molecular Biology Laboratory and CISPROT, NDB. So these are all the examples of primary databases where the sequences of the DNA are stored. So let's see what are the different uh, DNA databases. In primary there are two types, either it's a nucleotide database or a protein database. So primary database, uh, it comes under the international nucleotide sequence databases. It consists of three databases that are very important here. You can see the first is DDBJ that is DNA Data Bank of Japan. It's the database maintained by National Institute of Genetics. Then EMBL that is European Bioinformatics Un uh, Institute maintains the database that is European Molecular Biology Laboratory. And there is a gene bank that is maintained by NCBI NIH. Uh, USA that is National Center for Biotechnology Information. So these are the three primary databases that stores the sequence of the nucleic acid or the DNA or RNA all over the world and these are the databases that uh, maintains the homology among themselves all over the world so that the res research or the sequence that is being stored here are updated in uniform manner all over the world. Let's see what are the secondary databases. Uh, the results from the entries of the primary databases or the extracts from the primary databases are stored in secondary databases. So uh, here the, there will be parts of primary databases that are important. These are sometimes manually created or sometimes also automatically generated. Swissplot is an example of a secondary database where secondary information is stored. Let's see the few examples of uh, primary protein sequence uh, databases here. Uh, just uh, just like we saw nucleic acid database, PFAM that is uh, protein family database where uh, alignments and uh, sequences using HMMs uh, are stored here. Then prints, uh, then prosite, then protein information resource, uh, super family uh, where different sequences are stored, Swiss prot that is maintained by Swiss Int Institute of Bioinformatics. This is also one of the database. Then uh, PIR. So all these databases are helping in storing the primary sequence of proteins let's uh, see in a, in a at a glance this is nucleotide nucleotide database this is protein database so here you can see three databases are there under uh, the insdc uh, the whole different uh, you know three important databases are there this is the primary nucleic acid sequence database uh, then there is a protein database um, sequence based on sequence there are different types uh, that is primary database then secondary data databases are there then there are some structural databases also these are few examples there are other databases are also there that we are going to subsequently see in the coming videos on bioinformatics the PDB then uh, protein data bank then CAS class architecture topology homology of protein then scope structural classification of protein then all these kinds of databases are based on structure. So these are the different uh, examples and different way through which a data is being stored on the internet. So therefore the databases are very important in bioinformatics and therefore these are helping in storing the vital information of biological use and it can be assessed throughout the world. So I hope you uh, got the introduction or the insight of bioinformatics and how the, these databases are helping in maintaining the proper sequence or proper information of the biological origin throughout the world. I hope you like the video. Thanks for watching. Uh, please share, comment and subscribe. Uh, I am going to post more videos on bioinformatics like this. So thanks for watching.